So when did assisted reproductive technologies begin? If you ask someone that question, you'll probably hear stuff like 1978, 1981. But hold on a second, because I think I can take you back further than that. Let's talk about it. What's up? I'm Corlando Scott, and I'm an assisted reproductive technology attorney based out of Los Angeles. That simply means that I've dedicated my career to helping people grow their families through assisted reproductive technologies like surrogacy, egg donation, sperm donation, all that good stuff. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the history of assisted reproductive technologies. When did it start? Where did we get things from and where are we now? So I'll walk us along a timeline. We'll look at some ancient history, we'll look at some history history, and we'll look at some not so distant past history. Let's dive in. Would you believe me if I told you that assisted reproduction has been around for thousands of years? All right, stick with me. So you may have heard of the patriarchal character Abraham. He appears in Judaism, Christianity, and even Islam. And as the story goes, he was married to a woman named Sarah and they were dealing with fertility issues. Now, cultures were a little different back then, but the story goes like this. Sarah had a handmaiden or a servant and her servant served as their surrogate. So Abraham and Sarah gave birth to a son named Ishmael through her handmaiden surrogate, Hagar. Yeah, thousands and thousands of years ago. Now, you probably won't read about that in any medical treaties that you look up assisted reproductive technologies in, but I mean, the argument could be made. It was surrogacy. So let's fast forward a few thousand years and go all the way to the end of the 18th century. Yeah, long before 1978 and the first test tube baby that we talk about. So even in the 18th century, scientists and doctors started to study about the problems and obstacles to conceiving a child. And by the end of the 18th century, the first known medical action in the field of human reproduction came to be in the form of artificial insemination. Then by the 19th century, the use of donated sperm shocked the world. I think it was around 1884 exactly. Imagine the shock and surprise and disbelief when the idea of conceiving a child not genetically related to the parents were introduced. Now with this milestone, by the second half of the 20th century, two major technological advances have been made available. That's gamete freezing and IVF. Now we're ready to talk about the timeline. So let's take a quick look at that timeline. At some point between 1845 and 1849, in my birth state of Alabama, physician Marion Sims arguably became the most famous American surgeon of the 19th century, and he was acknowledged as the founder of modern surgical gynecology. His experiments in Montgomery, Alabama involved artificially inseminating 55 infertile women. Now, these women unfortunately weren't willing participants. At that time, they were African slaves. But we're talking about the medical advances here. From those experiments, he was able to produce one pregnancy which eventually led to a miscarriage, but that started the ball rolling with regards to assisted reproductive technologies. Fast forward to 1884 at Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia. Dr. William Pencost consulted with a Quaker couple who was struggling with infertility. They believed that the woman was capable of conceiving and the problem was that her husband was infertile. So he started what then was an ethically questionable experiment, which we now call artificial insemination. He inseminated the wife with the sperm of one of his medical students, and the experiment was successful and resulted in the birth of a baby boy. Now fast forward all the way to the 1950s, and we have Dr. Robert Edwards. Around that time, Dr. Edwards started working on isolating hormones on mice. And by 1965, he successfully created a human embryo by adding his own sperm to a human ovum or human egg in a Petri dish. Now we have to remember the culture of the time. So with possible fear of the potential backlash and criticism and religious condemnation, the doctor destroyed the evidence and kept his research a secret until 1976 when he found his research partner, Dr. Patrick Steptoe, and that helped him take his work to the next level. 
So if we fast forward to 1976, we have that team working together in Manchester, England, and they accomplished the second non-viable pregnancy. It resulted in an ectopic pregnancy, but it resulted from an IVF procedure. Then we have 1978, and this is what most people point to as the birth of assisted reproductive technologies. This is when we had the first successful birth after an IVF treatment, and little baby Louise Brown was born. Now, before I tell you about the last milestone on my timeline, do me a favor. If you're getting anything out of this video, go ahead, like it. Let YouTube know so they know to share it with other people. And if you think there's somebody else who may like it, share it with them. Go ahead, be social. Now, the last major milestone I'll talk about was 1992, where we had the first successful birth by ICSI, or intracytoplasmic sperm injection. If we fast forward to modern day, Every day we're seeing new medical advances in technology that change our perception and old beliefs regarding human reproduction. Here's one that I learned not too long ago. It's possible now to have a child with three genetic parents. Yeah, you heard that right. Three parents. What we can do now is take the unhealthy or an unhealthy cell out of an egg and implant a healthy cell and that egg would be the result of two different women. And then you can fertilize it with sperm, and voila, now you have an embryo that's resulted from three humans. That's just one example without getting into the science and medicine that's way above my head, but everything is growing at the speed of light. So what we know 10 years from now about human reproduction will be starkly different than what we know now. Over 175 years, I'll say, since it all really started with new medicine as we know it, new challenges will continue to appear morally, ethically, and legally. So if you're looking to grow your family through assisted reproductive technologies, make sure that you have a team around you that can help you navigate all the nuances. I have something for you for free, and it's called the Surrogacy Path. It's a seminar where I walk you through all of the parts of the surrogacy process that are important to know before you get started, before you ever start making phone calls, it's good to have some knowledge under your belt. So if you wanna get your hands on the surrogacy path, click below and grab the link and you'll be taken to my free training. I can't wait to see you there.